Hello, everybody. Today is March 6th, 2024. And I am going to preface this right away to everyone that I have been very emotional. <laughs> I have been going through a wilderness testing. I, did, I, I had forgotten, which you'll see at some point in here he speaks about. I had forgotten because of oftentimes when we are in the middle of a temptation in the wilderness, there's a fog of war. And in the midst of that fog of war, we can get to a point where you forget that you're brought into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And con con confusions can set in. That should be one signifying event in someone's life that the enemy is currently there. Bringing his fog of war. And this has been going on for several days. And in the midst of going through it all, I've still been receiving from him things he would like for me to bring forth. But that's separate ministering to him in the midst of battles and whatnot is separate from essentially going through the battles themselves or the temptations themselves. And so what I find interesting is that you can still minister to him in the middle of a battle and he's still going to speak to you when you're in the middle of a battle about other things, which I find amazing because truthfully that comes from him wanting to reveal things to his children. But we're all going to go through a testing. Every single one of us is going to go through a purification process. And we have a lot of things to, a lot of things he said that need to be removed from us, but also approving. You see, he said, it's not only removing the dross that happens in the wilderness. It's also a tempering of the sword, a tempering of the sword is a testing of it it's gone through its processes it's gone through the refinement process it's been pounded and shaped in, into shape by the lord and yet it still needs to be tested that's what i'm talking about and because he he's so faithful that he warned me and i even have it in a video he made me put it in a video that there were challenges coming and i kept saying i believe it's to me personally but it's abroad and it sure is both this video and consequently the release of the blog will be a revelation of both how it came to me and it will always come to the forerunners first. It will always come to those who are pioneering with God. The fallow ground that hasn't been plowed for a while. Because we have an adversary against us. But in that, every trial that the Lord brings us to. Because it was the Spirit who led Yeshua into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So every challenge and temptation and testing that the Lord will bring us to, he will bring us through. And it is for the tempering of that sword. Which means he's going to test if the metal is been, has been purified to, to a pure and strong state. Which is really a reflection of your relationship with him and whether it can stand in the storms or in the battles. Hence his sword reference. So I had been going through this period for quite some time where I was still bringing forth word that he wanted for others. But when no one knows is that in the in-between phases of that the onslaught of the wilderness temptations has been very very heavy on me and I, I have actually had people reach out who really don't know me very well and said I saw you in the spirit several times and this is what I saw and um, I believe there's a correlation between what the people were seeing and reaching out just at those moments as to what I was going through. In that, I found out today, in hindsight with the Lord, a lot of things that he wanted to explain to me on the hind side of the trial. 
you see, he's not going to, he, he, it wasn't that he wasn't speaking to me in the trial. He, he was, and I could hear him speak, but the enemy was shouting, just shouting. And so the battle was really, really strong to desire to shut God out. Turn your back on him. Curse God and die, right? The whole Job kind of scenario. And in the midst of it, I was letting the Lord know all this is going on and repeating the vileness to him that was coming to me and through me, like into me from the enemy. And telling him exactly who it was. But also telling him that I'm in the midst of something extremely strong that really, really wants me to side with it. But all I could do was stand in front of him in this state of what looked like a frozen state before him, like, um, you know, kind of staring him down. But at the same time, repeating to him everything that was coming at me um, as a temptation to believe, which essentially was you know, that God can't be trusted. He's withholding from you. It was the entire garden scenario all over again. And so you know who that is. I mean, he has no new um, strategies up his sleeve. So he'll try what worked in the past. It worked for Adam and Eve, right? So let's try again. And actually, the Lord just said to me, don't you understand that what you've been putting forth is challenging his entire kingdom? I do get that, sir. I do get that. And I heard that from you even in some of the recordings of that. But at the same time, everything is sovereign under you and everyone bows their tongue and their knee to you now. And so that was part of the challenge and the temptation that was sent to me from the enemy was that if everything is sovereign and allowed, then he is allowing all of this in your life, right? And it's the truth. But at the same time, the temptation was, okay, well, then turn your back on him and be angry at him. And I brought all that to his face. And see, the devil can take something and twist it. He can use something like God is sovereign and everything he allows in your life for a reason. And then turn it and go, so you shouldn't trust him because look at what he's doing, right? So truthfully, the temptation was in my belief, whether I upheld it or not, right? And the truth of that temptation was my belief about God at my core. So he's telling me right now, I'm sorry, that's why I'm pausing. He said, so really, it was more about me showing you what the truth was. And as I read this out to you, you'll see what the truth has been in me or was in this temptation trial and testing this proving of the sword that he is this this weapon that he is forging in his fire to use against the, his enemy because apparently i'm just realizing this now as he's speaking to me and i'm doing my best to speak both on this recording and to him he's saying you've gotten to the point of refinement where i have to test your sword now i have to test you and I and I am saying to him at the same time, there's there's no there's no coincidences with God that we would spend so much time on the wilderness testing, and then you bring it out to me that I'm going to be challenged, and then to be on this side of that entire teaching, and so he's saying to me right now, so tell them that they too will go through this. If they're not going through it now, they will, because my forerunners and my pioneers will go through it first. And then I'll turn around and use them as freely they have received all these lessons that will freely give them out. And that's what I am attempting to do here, folks, is just explain to you a little bit about those challenges. See, I don't tell everybody everything. I have told you some of the physical challenges that I go through, but oftentimes you'll find out about my warfare afterwards. And, you know, I... Part of this challenge as well was for me to go, wait a minute, is this me or them because of what they were saying? That is going to be part of the challenge too, is for you with God to determine whether there are roots in you 
that you need to get healed from and deal with, or if it's coming from the outside. And that was part of this fog of war. Cause I'm like, well, I, what? And it makes so much more sense on the other side of it because the way that my morning went, which I don't have in here, uh, the written part of this, the way that my morning went was I was in the middle of this battle. As I said, it's been kind of building in, and it's been going on for several days. But it built up to an extreme where it was to the extent where it had to be vomited back out to God. Um, because in in sometimes in our struggles and in our battles, he's telling me right now, you all will hide away and try to ignore the fact that these things are happening. And what I need you to do is bring it to me and dump it before my face so that we can sort it out and don't turn from me. So essentially, it might have taken me a couple of days <laughs> as I was fighting the best that I could with him. But it came to a culminating head, a pinnacle point, And it reached all the way up to the high places inside of me that were challenging God directly. And I could see that. And I could see that if it remained unchallenged properly, it was gaining ground. And so... It got to a point because he's so faithful that he kept speaking to me regardless because I kept saying like, I don't want to do this to you. I don't want to bring this to you. You don't deserve this, et cetera, and so on. But the very thing that I needed to do was sit before him and not because that that is it's a way of hiding away without hiding away, he said, meaning you don't want to turn from me completely you just want to turn away from me to where you're not facing me again because there's shame that this stuff is going on but you see in christ there is no shame and condemnation so you have to know that that's the enemy and i kept telling him well this is nothing more than your enemy which is the carnal nature the flesh itself but at the same time that's true it is it felt like more and so i was Really, the point of what I'm trying to say is that I, I just got to a point where I was like, okay, fine. And I just went before him, literally looking him down, like looking him in the eye and released it all to him. That's what I call vomiting it all out to him, saying, this is what's going through me. This is what's being purported. I know these things are lies according to scripture, but everything in me is so strong right now to want to turn from you and blame you for it all and be in resentment and bitterness and unbelief and doubt. And I also just want to come home to you. I mean, right now inside my person, I just want to be in the sanity that is the presence of the Lord. And you can hear my tears and my voice, but the, the juxtaposition is that all he could do was beam with a smile. And I, I was still stuck in this place at that moment where I was so, if you will, traumatized by having to deal with the amount of vileness coming in me to me, through me, back to him, that I am just staring at him who is looking at me, and he's white. All I can see is bright, brilliant white light. I don't normally see him like that, but he showed himself to me like that, and he also showed an emanation coming off of me that was the same color, and all he could do was smile like that emoji with the big teeth smile, and I kept going, huh, what? And he said, I don't, I don't think you understand what happened here today. And so he said, with that, I'd like you to go into this. So, excuse me. It's still, I'm very emotional still because I'm going to, after this recording, probably sit alone with him for the rest of the day. Because what happened at the hindsight of this vomiting it out to God, release. You know, if it's coming to you, let it go through you, release it to him. Don't run from him. When I did that, I have been in his presence since sitting there listening to him just speak and speak and speak and speak. And please understand, when I say that, that is not a common thing for me every day. I may hear from him little sentences here and there throughout the day. If I'm really, really fortunate, a paragraph audibly, like inside, but audibly. Today, he was just spilling forth and whoever was with him, whether it was one of the cloud of witnesses or an angel, but I keep getting the impression that it's an angel and it's a very big protective angel. I, I don't, I don't know any other way to describe that, but 
I could hear them speaking, not only to me, but to each other so that I could hear, like they knew I was in the room and that, but they would say things like the angel would say something to the Lord, like she's going to see it soon. What are, you know, and just these little comments. And um, so I'm going to return to that after this because I need more encouragement and building back up on the hindsight of it. And he is, he's so faithful and he has everything in him for restoration. So I'm very emotional still because this is very raw. And I actually didn't, I actually got my computer out because I wanted to type it up for myself to remember what he was telling me because he gave me a few definitions and scripture. And um, I wanted to put that down. And when I did, he said he had some things to say. And when you'll see me get to the point where he said to me, I had no idea what he was going to type. I mean, I knew a little bit of what he had shared, but so as, as I'll be reading it to you, I was learning all these things as he spoke them to me. So if you're ever finding yourself in a place where he is speaking to you a lot that day, stay in that place with him. I'm planning on going back there. But as you can see by the title of this, it's a battle against Satan and a victory in Christ. And the quoted telling of this story from the mouth of God is because I'm not going to be the one telling you most of this story. You'll see my words in the very beginning and the rest of it is his perspective of what took place. And he said, I wanted you to, to, to tell them that. And I wanted it written like this because they are going to go through this. And he's very heavy over me when I say that. My whole head is jerking forward. They will go through this. So you will see the beauty in it. Is it painful? Is it vile? Is it a true satanic temptation? Yes. They will have to go through this. Every one of my children. But the forerunners and the pioneers will go through it first. Because I kept looking at him saying like, there are some people I think that don't ever battle stuff like this or they never talk about it. And yet I find myself in this position. And one of the things that he's, he said in here is that I'm taking you someplace I'm not taking them. And you'll see why. And I was about to explain more, but he said, they'll see why, because I'm going to talk about Joshua and Caleb and how they were set apart and different. I began this morning knowing I was in a very big warfare challenge. What I didn't know was that it was a setup to succeed with the Lord and still is as he plays this out. All strategies are his and he is sovereign over the life of his sons. You see, I literally have been just doing what he leads me to do, saying to you all what he says to me, essentially living authentically with him, facing him head on and being accountable in my spirit and soul to God. In that, he said, I have made a reputation in the spirit realm of one who stands for the most high. And as we know, that comes with challenges. We have an adversary, the devil, the carnal nature, his personality and attributes, the demonic, the filthy thought stream, and the plots and ploys of hell. I woke this morning with a serious issue going on, and truth be told, it was going on last night too, and maybe before that. And he said to me, and this is his quoted word, Janet, I set up an onslaught of temptations to come your way. I set it up that you would be challenged with everything they could send your way to doubt, to be in unbelief toward my goodness and intentions for you and your life here, to cause you fear, to send prideful thoughts your way that give you an opportunity to focus on solely yourself and to deny coming to me, exalting me, or worshiping me. I set it up just like I set up Job and all his temptations and challenges. You have an adversary. I have an adversary in my children who will attempt to come up against me in them. But you see, when they gave all they could at you and through my sovereign will that they should tempt you in it all to test you and for you to see what is truly in your inner soul and spirit, you came to me with it all. Oh, sure. It was hard. Vile thoughts of anger, resentment, unbelief, frustration, accusation, fear, doubt, pride, and so much more. But where did you go? To whom did you run to? Did you turn your back on me and hide away? No, you didn't. You faced me head on, spilled it all, all out to me and stared me down about it. Don't you see? 
When you do that, you come through phases with me. You are tempted to sin and turn your back on me. This was a trust exercise. They told you it was your belief system and that you are out of belief in God. You are a doubter of my goodness in your life and my intentions toward you, that you are impure and a lack of faith, doubt, and unbelief have left you impotent. They said to you, you cannot trust me to be faithful and true to you. Oh, maybe others can, but not you. They said you should shut down and slink away into the darkness. But instead, you brought the darkness to me. That is victory in the trust department, child. And do you know why? No one will come to me with all that and sit at my feet and look me directly in the eye and tell me the vileness that is coming forth if they do not trust me and seek me with their whole heart. That is what you were doing, worshiping me, when all seem to be that I have abandoned you and forsaken you. The truth is, I never will. The challenge was this. When all seems as if it is completely opposite of me supporting and loving you, will you be tempted to believe that in turn from me? You did not. You brought all things to my face, perhaps in confusion and definitely in major testing, but you came through with flying colors. It was never about the thoughts, but what you would do with them and whom you would turn to. I challenge the best and what I have for you requires the ultimate purification, refinement, and testing. You must know what is in you, and in you you have believed and am persuaded is able. You see challenges bring forth perseverance, and perseverance brings forth tenacity, and tenacity brings forth victory. Define these below. Definition challenge. A call to take part in a contest or competition, especially a duel a task or situation that tests someone's ability and attempt to win a contest or championship in a sport, an objection or query as to the truth of something, often with an implicit demand for proof, an invite to engage in a contest to contest something, make a rival claim to or threaten someone's hold on a position, Invite someone to do or say something that one thinks will be difficult or impossible. Make demands on. Prove testing to. Despite the truth, dispute the truth or validity of. Object to. And the root definition is accusation, accuse, calumny, and calumniate. And I had no idea that to challenge was the root was accuse perseverance, to persist in doing something despite difficulty, excuse me, despite difficulty or delay in achieving success, persevere, continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. And the root definition of persevere is to abide by strictly, very strict, thoroughly, severe. And tenacity is the quality displayed by someone who just won't quit, who keeps trying until they reach their goal. The quality or fact of continuing to exist. Tenacity, the quality or fact of being able to grip something firmly. Grip, persist, determined. And victory, an act of defeating an enemy or opponent in a battle game or other competition. A victor, a victor is a person who defeats an enemy or opponent in a battle game or other competition, and the root definition is conquer. Romans 8, 35 through 37, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for slaughter. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And he said, please highlight sword. The reason I want you to do that, Janet, is because they have a sword too. You are the sword of the Lord, the word of the truth. And I temper you. I test you when that sword has been refined and purified to test its strength and its resolve and loyalty to me. They have a sword of their mouth too. And it's exactly what they brought forth. In everything that they attempted to do, you still brought it all to me. 
So, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Shall the shaking tribulation distress, the persecution of accusations, the famine, where it seems as if you've been left and forsaken and forgotten, or that you're naked in shame and in peril by their sword? Will that, will that ever separate you from my love? Because it is written for your sake. We are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But I say no. In all these things, you are more than conquerors through me who loves you. So let's recap this, Janet. The challenge came. I warned you it was coming. And only now are you recalling what I said to you was coming. You even have it in other recordings. In the challenge was a setup and set up to gain victory and for you to really see what was in you when push came to shoving from the enemy. What you would do. You've always said to me, would I be one running into the fire or away from it to save when push came to shove? I will only know when the fire comes. Well, the fire came and this is what happened, Janet. I tell you this so you will tell them. The fire, the challenge came, and it was to bring forth, as the definition states, it brought forth a call to a contest or a contesting you and your belief in me. Based in my identity as your father, it was a dual one kingdom rhetoric against the other, the principles upon what is believed and upheld within. So that dual and contesting brought forth a situation to test your ability to believe in my goodness toward you and give you an opportunity to prevail over it all as it was ob as it was objected and hardcore within your mind it means an objection to it you were challenged against the truth in your mind engaged in warfare and temptation to turn from the truth when the rival claim came to threaten your hold in position this is just the definition of challenge but it is what takes place this challenging claim comes into a man's mind to invite that man to do or say something, come into agreement that this thing is impossible. And this is to prove you, it is a refinement, to test your resolve in the truth and the validity of it and the objection to it. Think, accuser of the brethren in a court proceeding to sway a case. This is what he does. As the root definition of challenge states, accusation, accuse, calumny, and calumniate. Didn't he tempt you by doing just that, making false and slanderous statements to come to me, flinging all those vile lies at me? I'm going to fix that when there have been mistakes. I'm fixing that one. To come to me, flinging all those vile lies at me, knowing as you spoke this is the carnal nature who is at enmity to you. And I'm sorry, but it is saying this and thus, and these statements are not the truth of your person. In that you prevailed to still face me head on, bringing it all to me, not turn your back on speaking to me. And I then began to tell you, this was that challenge that was coming. The challenge of unbelief, doubt, fear, pride, anger, bitterness, and more. The challenge to turn your back on me the trust challenge. Will you trust me when I make it seem as if I will never come through for you with all that I have spoken to you? And then the long testing of perseverance. I told you, if you endure to the end, then the salvation, didn't I? Well, perseverance through all those challenges and child, I let them come with it all at you, brings forth a tenacity in you. If you persist, despite the difficulty or delay in achieving the success, this is the definition of persevere to the end, to endure, to continue the course, even in the face of difficulty or with little to no prospect of success, and you will abide strictly, very strictly, thor thoroughly, and severely. These are the root definitions of tenacity. Then tenacity is developed, and tenacity is the quality displayed in a person who won't quit. It's doggedness. And this tenac tenacious person will persist until they reach their goal. They were seeking to stop you with everything they had to bring forth, but you came to me with it all. You fulfilled the root definition of tenacity, the quality to continue existing in the promise, gripping it firmly, very determined. And that, Janet 
brings forth the victory in due time and season. And your time has come up due, sweet child, for promises to come to fruition in this realm. Your actions of defeating the internal battle and enemy of the opponent, the contesting, as you fight the fight of faith, has brought you forth as a victor, a person who defeats his enemy or opponent in a battle or a contest and competition to competing forces and has become a conqueror. All my children will go through testing, and you are right to say all things in life are ordained of God, for he is sovereign. And you chose to believe I brought this all to you, though you were confused. Note, that's when an adversary is present. And that all I bring to you should be given thanks for, because it is always for my benefit. And he meant mine or yours. I told you it was that all things work together for your good, because you love God. What way did I tell you that you really love me? To obey me, reverence me, and trust me. This is obedience, honor, and faith. You endured through a testing of your faith in me. The rest is mine to bring forth the promises. As you have gone through many challenges, temptations, and battles, and still remain loyal to me, tell them all I do this with and to all. It is refinement, testing, and proving the tempering of the sword. Crossing you over into the promises was always mine to bring forth, but I did tell you that you will have to be as Joshua in the wilderness with Caleb. You will have to believe that the giants are conquerable and then with perseverance and tenacity fight the good fight, and God will go before you and will obtain the victory with you. For if God be for you, who can be against you or remain against you? Joshua and Caleb believe in who I am, what I promised, and would not turn back. But instead, no matter the opposition or how it looked, they went forth with me, and we conquered all before us. This is the testing of that faith and trust. When pushing became shoving with them, those in the wilderness, and the promises were at stake, Joshua and Caleb went forth and did not look back. There was not turning back from the plow. They forged forth into the unknown, believing in whom they were persua persuaded was able. This is that challenge. I will now take my Joshua's and Caleb's forth into the promises, and the others will see the beauty in my faithfulness and power to save. This is the witness, Janet, and I have need of witnesses in this hour. Go forth, my first fruits, when I send you forth in one accord. Go forth in all I equip you with, and bring my witness to the world, for I have need of some mature first fruits to come forth, so others will believe on me too. Well done, the rest is mine to fulfill. Warn them that I will test all in this, for it is a final purification, as I told you, and you have come forth as pure gold refined in the refiner's fires. They will all go through the fire, and remember I call it challenges. For our kingdom has an adversary in this earth, and we all and we hail from another kingdom, so you will all be challenged in this earth. But when you come into one victory after another in this realm, all realms will eventually open up to you, as you have been tried and found true to the truth, the way, and the life in Christ Jesus. I have need of a people who know their God and will and can do great exploits with him. But one must slay the giants inside before you will be able to slay them outwardly publicly for, excuse me, for the whole of creation to witness. They, after all, are eagerly awaiting the sons of God to manifest. I am willing and I am able. That means I desire this as my good will to do and I am able to bring it forth of my power. Believe. Remain loyal in your challenges of the enemy within, and you will become a victor within, and then the results are seen in the material world. And yes, I mean bodily manifestations of my power to save and my love to restore. I need Joshua's and Caleb's who are not afraid to go into the land and slay giants. Those are a rare breed, but I do have a few here and there ready to manifest with me. I told you what I have manifest with me and help me bring the truth to the world. I told you what I have written and choose to do with you is very different than the average mission. I have need of an Enoch caliber man of God in the earth to bring forth the sons of God into maturity and manifestation. These are the forerunners. Not only are they warning of the wrath to come and calling all to repentance, but they are quite literally slaying giants. 
and those I have need of, and will walk straight out of them myself. You asked me, and I heard you just now, but what about the times I came into agreement with you, but it never manifested? And I say to you, if that's not a challenge of my goodness and faithfulness, what is? I told you it would seem as if these things are not coming to be, but they are in their appropriate timing. And the timing is mine. As I told you, the precision is mine. How can you be challenged to trust me if you are given nothing to doubt? I need to tell you, yes, and then cause you to wait and see that all things do not look as you think they should, and then see what you do toward me with your trust, if all things look a mess and incongruent. Are you believing by sight, or by every word that proceeds out of my mouth, my decrees? Blessed are those who do not need to see but still believe. This is the fulfillment of that. And so tell them, likewise, they must stay loyal to the truth, no matter what it looks like. Believe and conquer giants with me, children. For your Lord goes before you and is your rear guard. I am always there, no matter what it seems like. Stick tight, fight, persevere. Become tenacious toward the promises and in whom you have believed. And you too will be victorious. Excuse me, it keeps jumping. It will, you too will be victorious. We slay giants. The victory is in the faith and facing me. Believe and do not be swayed to turn from that belief. And in time, my timing, the promises arrive. I have need of pioneers and forerunning pioneers venture into uncharted territory with me. But I always bring them through. This you must know about me and solidify within yourselves. Be as this one, and whatever the battle within, bring it to my face. Stay resolute with what I have told you. Do not turn back on it, no matter the temptation. And then, when you have endured to the end, you will be saved. Healing, or wholeness, is the children's bread. And love, my children, and bring, and, and love, my children, and bring healing. I love my children, excuse me. And I bring healing in my wings. That is my outreach. Believe me for this, no matter how ugly the meantime is. I am faithful and true. And I love you. And I see through your obedience, reverence, and faith that you love me. And all things work out together for those who love God. All things. Even hardcore temptations in the wilderness of affliction. But in the afflictions of suffering, I was taught obedience too, incarnate. And in your battles, as you head off with Satan and his nature, lies and accusations, faithlessness and unbelief, you will be refined, sanctified, consecrated unto me, and purified for my use. If you do not give up or give in to the lies and accusations set against me, my nature, and my identity, I am faithful and true, and I am for you, not against you. This is the wilderness temptation. Challenges, perseverance to tenacity, and culminating in a victory and a victor, victory in Jesus. And he had me sign this. God had me sign this. Your paraclete, your partner, advocate, counselor, comforter, the Holy Spirit of our Lord. And then he wanted me to finish it off with this picture because it says walking daily in victory you are a victor in christ redeemed by the blood and given authority to trample on snakes and he wanted me to put that in there because the snakes are going to come to your mind to your soul right your emotions are going to be played with your mind is going to be played with and then your will is really the thing that's going to be tempted uh, tempted to turn from god because your will is where your actions will be found so they're going to come in with their rhetoric, which will make you feel a certain way, right? Because it's flowing in you and through you. And then you, if you don't cast down those imaginations and deal with them by taking them to the Lord and speaking to him that these are not truths, et cetera, and so on, and dealing with it, then you will be led into to your will. And whether you're going to lay your will down and walk out the will of the Father, or if you're going to turn from him in your own judgment and reasoning, turn your back on God. So the battle is always going to start in the mind. It's going to affect your emotions and it's going to lead you to be challenged in what you're going to do about it. That's your will. And if you have a will, you might turn your back on God. You may be tempted to go into days and days, weeks, months, years of 
not believing in him and re reinforcing, he says, or solidifying his unfaithfulness, right? And those are all lies. And we're the only ones that can do something about upholding the truth within. I actually thought I was failing in a great many ways, but I was clueless at the moment that he sent the temptation or sent me to the temptation, either way, them to me. But they were they were sent of the Lord to try me in every possible way with all they had. Well, they've been doing that for quite some time against my body in general, so it doesn't shock me or even confuse me scripturally that he would have this, just like Job, to touch all parts of my life. Because what I'm seeing is that the caliber child of God that will manifest in these times to help him bring in this great harvest is going to have to be someone that knows their God. And not only knows him, but actually is believing in him that he is able and that he is true and faithful. Everything in us will be tempted to turn our backs on that, his identity. This really comes down to two things always. God's identity, whether we uphold it or not, the truth of who he is, or ours. They're going to come at both of those things. God is not this, like in the garden. He's holding back from you. Um, he's keeping things from you. You can't trust him, right? So it's always going to hit his and he says, I'm faithful and true, which means you actually can trust him that if he says something, he's going to do it. He has no darkness in him. So the enemy is always going to come with that, you know, like trying to get you to, to believe something um, that is an accusation of lies and calumny. Is that what the word was? False accusations about God's identity and then yours. Well, because of that, you should turn your back on him and, you know, basically slink away with the devil, which would be a false identity for yourself and then walking in pride and a whole bunch of other things. And so they're always going to come at those two things. But number one over and over was they would try to get people to not believe in God's faithfulness and his identity. And if that didn't work, then get yourself focused on yourself long enough because you'll forget about God. And that's what Satan does, focus us on himself. I'm going to be like you, just not under you and do all these things and turn my back on you. I don't trust you, you know. And so it's it was his personality. And that's what I was trying to say to God. This is totally the carnal nature. It's totally the enemy's personality, but it's like flowing through me. And I don't go after that stuff, God. So I don't know what's going on. What is this? Are you getting at roots? Like, do I have this stuff inside me? What is going? And so there was this fog of war. And it wasn't until it wasn't until this that I got the victory and the breakthrough. So I want to reiterate this to everyone. It wasn't until I finally, because I didn't want to face him because he was aware. Okay, so this, this doesn't even make sense. So please note this for your own lives. He was aware of everything that was coming in me and through me to think and to feel. But I didn't want him to see all that. Like I wanted to save him from the disgustingness. And he's the one who knew it was coming to begin with. And is way more used to it than me and can handle it way better than me, right? Or you. So it was when I finally looked at him and vomited it all out. This is what's going through my head, my emotions, and threatening everything that we stand for, essentially, right? And that's when he started grinning really, really, really largely. I mean, glowing white and grinning. And then he showed me, because it's almost like if you look down at your body, like right now, you look down at your arm or your leg. It was almost like I, out of my peripheral vision, I could see that I was glowing bright white. And so was he. I mean, it was like the same color. Uh, I mean, essentially, right? I'm not going on degrees and percentages here. But he kept smiling and he was trying to reveal to me that there was a victory and all of that. But all I could still feel was everything that the enemy still wanted me to feel, right? The doubt, the unbelief, the shame. Look at the shame of you bringing that to God. And really, there's no shame in it. You want to know why? It's Satan's rhetoric. And all I'm doing is going, this is what he is and what he's saying. And he should be the one ashamed, not me. So I, I had to come through all of that with him and stand before him. And I literally, if you can just imagine the emoji with the two eyes and no mouth, just two little beady eyes. I was literally just standing there like that. And I'm like, I'm not sure if this is my soul man who is essentially frozen before you in this state of what in the world just happened or my spirit both. 
but here I am. And he still is grinning like that emoji with the big teeth because of the victory. I didn't even see that as a victory at the time. I just stood before him like, there it is. There's all that garbage that I really didn't want you to have to deal with. And he's looking at me like, what? You know, like, what do you mean that I don't want to have to deal with? This is what I live for, for you to turn to me, you know? And so I just stood there like, like realizing what he was showing me and telling me, taking it in, but still kind of in a stupor from everything that just happened. And that's when he took my hand and started walking and we were walking in heaven. And he started talking to me about all these realms that are going to open up to me because I have been found faithful and true to uphold the truth and et cetera and so on. And folks, I tell you that while I sit here, while I speak, that the tooth is sharp cutting into my tongue just from speaking because I have restorations that I need. But, but yet this is what he told me. We're at the face of now I come through. So I still have to wait on that for his, what he called his perfect timing, the precision in due season. But I, I for you, I'm going right straight back into that place after all of this is uploaded and put into the blog. I'm going back into that place to walk with him because he began to talk to me about um, the testing here in this realm. If we'll stand strong and fight the giants with him within first and be tenacious and get the victory he can then turn us out toward everyone else and imbued with his power authority and his presence and all the troops he wants to send with us to to bring him and his whole kingdom to everyone else and with that all the other realms are going to open up to us i don't even know what that means I don't ever talk to him about all the other realms. <laughs> I do know something, though, we're still inside of him. And I think that that's a concept most people can't understand because we think from logic down here. Like, all we can understand is that there somebody must have created God, right? Because we're created. No. The only reason you can't wrap your head around the fact that he's uncreated is because we're created. And we think everything's made like us instead of the other way around. That we're the created ones. And there is such a thing as something uncreated. It just is. Is it hard to wrap your head around? Yeah. Do I fully understand? No. But I do agree with that. He's the eternal existent one who is uncreated, who has made all creation in this realm. What I also know is he's made out of light and energy and spirit. And he has a consciousness or a soul to him. Thoughts, ways, demeanor, disposition, character. And... That he has enveloped, sort of like um, if you've ever heard of a body can encapsulate like something um, foreign in it to protect the body. It'll make a calcium uh, capsule to basically like a bone capsule to encapsulate the foreign thing to protect the rest of the body. That is what he has us in right now. We are in an encapsulated area of God to protect from the rest of the body, which would be all the rest of the people in heaven who do not have to live with this fallen brokenness. So we're essentially in this realm that is set aside and encapsulated that fallenness and evil is only here for humanity and his children to interact with. Having said that, if we can conquer the giants with him here, and it begins with that mind emotions that challenges your will and whether you'll have one or lay it down to him and just believe the truth and be loyal and faithful to him it'll challenge you in this realm but if you should be found faithful and true to him and no matter what comes and no matter what image is portrayed that god is this and god is thus and you will only believe the truth and you will only worship him in truth and in spirit and love him. And you will never turn your back on him, but go to him with all the things and dump them before him and tr tr trust in this just to him, man. And don't trust in you. It's not about you. And he said, it's not even about all those thoughts. It was about who you're going to come to. And I said, where else am I going to go? Like Peter, you are, you, are, you, Peter said, you have the words to eternal life. You know, I didn't understand that so well until today. It means that everything that comes out of God makes me alive. Where else am I going to go? That's where I found myself. And he said, when you're found faithful in this realm, to that extent, slaying giants with me, all other realms will be open to you. And so I can only encourage you to do the work and work out your salvation. Practice 
upholding the truth and the spirit thereof. Please. Because there's a victory in it that he's going to bring forth, which is what he has promised us. And it will be hard and it will be tempting and there will be trials and everything in you is going to feel a lot in this realm and you're going to think a lot. But if you'll take those things to him to help you cast them down, you will be exalting him. And eventually when you endure to the end, you will be a conqueror, a victor with him and he will manifest himself to you. Those who diligently seek God with all their heart, those who will open up to him will see God. He's faithful and true. No matter what happens to me in this life, he's faithful and true. No matter what happens to you in this life, it does not change his identity. You will be tested in that. And the only way you can be tested to trust who he is, is that everything will come at you to challenge you and tempt you to believe he's not who he is. He fundamentally, you cannot be, you cannot be, you cannot be found to be true and pure in the trust and faith department with God if you're never challenged with doubt and unbelief. Challenged meaning tempted to go into those areas of doubt and unbelief. You have to be challenged with doubt and unbelief to slay doubt and unbelief. You have to be challenged in the area of trust to slay mistrust or unbelief. Faith. And without faith, you can't even please God. He's ready to carry some people through and to open up other realms of himself. We're encapsulated in this realm, but he but he's basically saying, I will I will bring you forth to be able to trans translate through all realms with me, opening up the possibilities of all things to you. This is what Yeshua walked in. It's going to be nothing less than what Yeshua walked in, except that he only did certain things, the first preliminary works, the common works that Yeshua did. There are greater the Holy Spirit is waiting to walk out, and I believe that's opening up the other realms, whatever that means. Maybe some of you know more about what that means than I. But I do know that it comes with walking out of the wilderness with him and crossing over Jordan. And folks, you have to believe you can take the giants before you even cross over. Then he's going to ask you to fight them within the wilderness first. And then he's going to cross you over and you'll publicly fight in the land. That is the story of Joshua and Caleb. But you see, it wasn't God. It wasn't it wasn't God without them or outside of them or not with them that that it wasn't them of their right arm slaying all those giants. It was God who went before them. It said it over and over. The God who goes before you. The Lord goes before you and he's your rear guard, which means the Lord's going to slay all those giants because he wants to. But he does need you to uphold him in this realm. Father, I pray that this blesses everyone. I pray that, pray that they get something out of it that will help them when the challenges come because they're going to come. And I pray you strengthen me in my faith and keep me there until the promises arrive in this realm because they have nothing more than to materialize from your realm to this realm as in heaven, so in earth. And in that I wait and I believe. And I thank you for this message and this word. And I give thanks to you in all things, including the temptations and the trials in the wilderness, because only those trials in the wilderness is what formed and forged the Caleb's and the Joshua's that crossed over. But with them, they took the pliable generation, the form formable generation that became a formidable foe against every public enemy out there. So if I have become a public enemy in hell with a poster thereof of most wanted, it is only because you have gone before me and they hated you first. But you also crushed them. And like this says, I am a victor in Christ because Christ has already crushed them entirely. And if I will only look to and partner with the paraclete, the advocate, the counselor, and the comforter of the Holy Spirit, then I too can trample on snakes daily and victoriously inside and out and i thank you for preparing such a people as this to come forth in this hour and i look forward to their debut father